So, you want to create some beautiful environments for your stories to take place in. You want to make some cool renders and swish animatics to woo your clients. But you're still getting used to the basics of SketchUp. Now the basics can be dull as dishwater to learn. So to get it out of the way, here's about five minutes of techniques that are going to save you a crap load of time and get you on your way to design some cool stuff. I'm Greg, this is the Set Design Channel, let's go. Navigation. Use a mouse. Trackpads lack accuracy and useful functions and they'll also give you an RSI in about 20 minutes. Hold the scroll wheel down to rotate the camera. You can also hold shift while doing this to track. This way you'll never need to go over here and click any of these buttons. Set one or two scene tabs early on when setting up a model. This way you have something to quickly click back to when your camera inevitably gets stuck in a wall. As well as moving the camera back and forth with the scroll wheel, you can set the focal length of your view in SketchUp by tapping Z to select the zoom tool, typing a number, then tapping enter. This will limitate a camera lens's focal length in millimeters. Selection. A single click selects a single edge or face. Double clicking selects a face and all surrounding edges. Triple clicking selects all connected geometry. You can also use these methods in reverse to deselect lines and faces if you're holding the shift key. Dragging a marquee from left to right will select items entirely inside the rectangle. Dragging from right to left will select everything the marquee touches. Make use of the selection options in the right click menu. These options differ slightly whether you have selected an edge, a face, or a group movement. Use the directional keys to lock your action to a particular direction. This helps keep track of your movements in a 3D space. It also applies to the rotate tool. When moving an object, type in the distance you'd like it to travel after beginning to move it in your desired direction. Then tap enter. This will move your object to precisely your desired position. This is also a great technique when drawing shapes. Sometimes you can find an item stuck on a certain plane. This 3D text for instance. To fix this, or to remove it from that plane, you can unglue it in the right click menu. The scale tool by default scales from the point opposite the one you select. Tapping the control button or option on Mac will make it so that you're scaling from the object's center. Drawing shapes. Similar to movement, you can lock your shape to an axis by using the directional keys. You can change the number of facets in arch or circle you're going to draw by typing a number immediately after selecting the tool. Try favouring a higher number of facets on more prominent items in your model and lower numbers of facets on less significant details. You can create a quick sphere by drawing two circles from an identical spot, clicking on one face and selecting the follow me tool, then selecting the other. This method is also good for creating domes. The Follow Me tool's primary purpose is to lead a shape along a path. This is good for modelling mouldings and skirting boards. Use the Follow Me tool by drawing out the route you want your shape to follow. Then draw your desired profile on one end of it. Select your route, then click the Follow Me icon, then click your profile. Look at that! Use components strategically to save time. You can block out a model initially by duplicating simple shapes, then go into one of those components and add detail when you're happy with the layout. You can also duplicate your item away from its intended position and edit it somewhere where you have more space. This way you'll be able to work on it much more easily and your actions will affect all other instances of that component. On the subject of which... Duplication! Tap Control or Option if using an Apple device while moving an item to switch to the duplicate mode. You can switch back to move quickly by tapping Control again. Remember to type how far you want to move it, then type Enter. Once you've duplicated your item by dragging it across and tapping Enter, you can immediately type in X and then however many duplicates you would like to make. This will make an evenly spaced array. You can also duplicate your item out to your endpoint and then press slash. Then type the desired number of duplicates and tap enter to create an evenly spaced array between those two positions. You can also use these methods for making an arched or circular array. Set yourself a center point and rotate your selection by a certain number of degrees, tapping control while doing so. Tap enter and then type the amount of duplicates you'd like. Also try rotating to a certain point, then dividing by your desired number to get an evenly spaced array. Colors. Rather than selecting and applying a new colour every time, try and get used to naming your materials and then editing them as you go. This makes changing your colour schemes really quick. You just have to select the material by using the paint bucket, holding the Alt key to activate the colour picker, selecting your colour, then click edit on your materials palette and away you go. Workspace. SketchUp initially opens up after an install with a very limited selection of tools on display. I recommend going straight into the preferences and turning off large tool buttons. Then go to View, Toolbars and turn on Large Tool Set, Standard Views, and if it's not already active, the Measurements. Have a play around and set up your workspace with tool sets you think you may need. You can always come back and edit it here. Turn on the default tray. It's turned off by default and it has loads of drop down palettes which will help you organise your model. If you're on an Apple device, you have to open each individual utility and stack them together. It's pretty messy. Sort it out, Tremble. Keyboard shortcuts. I've stated in the previous videos, learn them. There's a sheet online showing them all, and they're really easy to learn in SketchUp. L for line, R for rectangle, G for component. Genuinely, this is the most effective way of speeding up your workflow in any software. It's not exciting, but it'll cut down the time you spend hovering over the toolbar and allow you to think more about your design. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. If so, please leave a like, possibly a comment, subscribe, and I hope to see you back here next time on the Set Design Channel. Thank you, bye.